the computer. Okay, we are officially recording. And so um, I'm gonna go in and do a screen share so you can see my PowerPoint. Um, once I go into this, uh, we are gonna be rocking and rolling. I won't be able to see everybody uh, per se on their screen as I open this up here. Um, but now you should see my, does everybody, can you kind of let me know if you see that screen um, uh, with the, uh, uh, the lady there going crazy? Everybody see that? Yeah? All right. So here is our class. Now you are a homeschool teacher. Now what in the world are we going to do now that you're a homeschool teacher? teacher did anybody have like the oh my gosh i'm not prepared for this raise your hand anybody i'm not prepared for this okay um listen i i you know i have an education degree and let me just tell you it's it's really hard to teach your kids okay so <laughs> i will just be upfront with you as a trained educator this is not something easy to do um, but I want to just start off by saying thank you uh, to um, my awesome people at Chicago. Polly, Natalie, Kelly, Kristen, Karen, Sarah, thank you. Can you guys just wave to everybody, let them know? More than likely, you're here because one of them, either you saw their Facebook post, you saw them, um, maybe they sent you an email. And, and I, I just want to say to Chicago Title, to Polly, thank you to your team. Um, every time, uh, whenever I do a class with them, we always have amazing people that show up and people want to participate. So I love working with their team. And, uh, if you've got anything that's going to, um, you got listings that you want help with, trust me, you want Chicago title on your side. You want them working with you and helping you through this whole process. So make sure that you reach out to them and say, thank you for this. Um, my name, as you already guys, uh, most of you know, is Tomas. I'm the owner of Luxury Home Magazine. And um, we also have a pre-K academy. But I want to tell you this is that on the, other, uh, on the other side of this, as we go through everything that we're going through, there's so many lessons that are going to be learned. And uh, we're learning them and journaling all of them in our little journal that I have here. So we're writing all this stuff down so uh, we remember it. And so um, next here, I, I, we, I think we all need a laugh. Are you all ready for a laugh? But through all of this craziness, I want to show you a schedule that I found. This was a schedule that I found from one of the moms. She said, you know what? I'm teaching from home. I've got the perfect schedule. The perfect schedule. Take a look at this schedule. This is her toddler's homeschool schedule. Any questions? Eight to 10, frozen. 10 to 12, frozen two. Lunch, one to three, frozen. Three to five, frozen two. Dinner, six to eight, frozen. And then that's it, we're going to bed. That's it. That's the whole lesson plan for the whole week, right? I don't know if any, any raise your hand if you saw that one this week. Did anybody see that one this week? Love it. It's pretty funny. Um, look at this one. Look at this next one here. Uh, I love this. Retired teacher here. I'm sure parents are feeling this today. Started homeschooling the kids today by 9.30 a.m. All three were suspended for fighting. And I have the day off tomorrow. That's it. We're just shutting it down. Anybody else? <laughs> uh, I, I can feel your pain as a, a new homeschooled teacher. Now, this is, I, I, I'm a John Maxwell coach and speaker. And this was really interesting to me because, um, you know, John Maxwell, raise your hand if you've heard of John Maxwell, all the people that have heard of John Maxwell, read one of his books, right? Okay, awesome. So John Maxwell did it completely free. And I mean, like, it didn't matter anything. All you had to do was go to his Facebook site. And this is still there, by the way. He did a Facebook um, um, live talk where he talked about crisis. And some of this that he shared, um, that, that I'm, I'm, look, I'm just telling you where I got some of, excuse me, some of this from. And so when crisis strikes, there's some things that we need to keep in mind. And so the reason why our kids are at home, because there is a crisis that we're facing across the U S and, and, and you're not the only one that's facing this. There's so many people around the, the, uh, the globe. I mean, this is global, but keep in mind, this is something that, that, that really that John talked about that I thought was interesting. Number one is a crisis is quite common. It's just not for us. And 
when he said that, I thought, huh, what does he mean by that? Well, if you go back in history, have there been other crises that have come up? There have been other things that have come up. Yeah, there's, you know, we've had 9-11, we've had the recession, we've had things that have happened all throughout our history of being on this planet. There have been crises come up, just not for us of our generation. You know, I'm 44, and there's only been a few things that I've faced that have been, you know, you know, like anything like this. But can we all agree that this has been something even unprecedented amongst some of those other things, right? This is just very, very dis different. But now if we went back, I, I'm doing some research because I'm, I'm doing a mastermind starting on Thursday. Um, if you want more information, just let me know. But I'm starting a mastermind on an amazing book called The Obstacle is the Way. And this book is about um, Stoic philosophy and, and understanding that. But there was a gentleman in here. Anybody ever heard of Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, right? Wave, wave your hand if you've heard of him, right? You've heard of him before? Well, Rockefeller, um, I, I was amazed at every single crisis that he was through. At the age of 20, 21, there was a, a, this financial panic that broke out. And it devalued currency. I mean, it was just, it was a bad, bad, bad crisis. He comes out of the other side. Then he goes into the civil war. Then he goes into world war one. Then he goes into the great depression. I mean, it was like crisis after crisis after crisis. And then you think back for us, we haven't had the, as many maybe as, as what he's faced, but, but understand that there are times where this is going to be common and could we face something like this in the future again, now knowing what we know? It's very possible that we could face another crisis like this. Hopefully, we're preparing and we're learning from it. Now, the other thing that is interesting during a crisis is that it brings out the best and the worst in people. And if you've been to HEB, right, what have we seen as the worst? <laughs> people buying toilet paper by the garage load. I don't get it. As far as I know, COVID has nothing to do with toilet paper. It, is, it doesn't affect you in any way that would affect toilet paper, right? But yet, it's bringing out the worst. But have we also seen the best in people during this crisis? We've also seen the best. That's what's so amazing about crisis. Keep that in mind is that this is going to bring out the best in people. It's bringing out innovation. Anybody go to a restaurant and sit outside and do the uh, tailgating in, a, in, in the restaurant parking lots? That's innovation. It's very interesting. Um, so crisis can bring out the best in us. And I love this. John said this. John said this that I thought was really interesting. John said, a crisis can bump us from our comfort zone to our creative zone. Now think about that for a second. We were all like 2020 started with a bang. Anybody have been in the business? How did it start? I mean, we're, I mean, you talk to, to the title companies, you talk to Chicago title, man, there's just so much business happening. So many things going on. I think Polly, you shared with me, March has been one of the biggest months if I'm not right. Right. I mean, share that Polly. Yeah, we're up, um, you know, we do daily order counts, um, and year over year, we're up almost 12 orders a day, um, still through this, right? It's amazing. And so you think about it, that's, that's pipeline, right? There's things that are kind of coming in over time that have probably been working maybe, you know, maybe the last month, February, but here's the thing. It's like the year started off like, boom, and we were in our comfort zone. We're like, oh, I've got these deals. Oh, this is so good. Oh man, this is working. I mean, I'm getting referrals. And then all of a sudden, what the heck? Somebody is doing something and we now have this virus going rampant throughout our country. And so we were in a comfort zone and now we're out of that comfort zone, right? We're outside of that. And so if you think about this, it's forcing us to get into our creative zone. This is forcing us to do Zoom. Could we have done Zoom before? Could we have done this before? 100%. We could have done this before, but there is something about me telling a joke and everyone laughing. I mean, there's something to that, hearing everyone laugh, right? There's something about being around people, 
But now that we've been bumped out of our comfort zone, now we're in this creative space where we've got to figure this out. And here's what I've told my team at Luxury Home Magazine. I said, guys, we got to learn how to breathe underwater. And they all just looked at me. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about, Tomas? Is this, one of the, is this from one of your books? I say, listen, we have to adapt. We're going to have to learn. This is not about holding our breath and getting to the other side. This is about learning in a new way to breathe underwater and figure this out as we get to the other side. And so, hey, in a crisis, let's, let, let's allow this to bump us out of our comfort zone so that we can get into our creative zone. And so now, what, you can say, Tomas, what are we going to cover today? Well, it's real simple. I just I want to keep this short and sweet and, and give you some, some really good nuggets here that, uh, that have helped me. And also, can, can I share with you, like, because uh, I'm, I'm not the greatest at this, but I just want to be really open with you about some of the mistakes I've made. Does that sound fair? As an educated teacher, someone with a master's degree, I went to A&M, got my master's in education so that I could be a principal. And then I became a publisher. Who knew? There you go, right? But here's what we're going to cover today. Number one, we're going to talk about getting your kid, get your kids involved with planning. Okay, we're going to talk about that process. Get them involved in planning. Number two, we're going to talk about tone because tone is so important. Yep, your voice is saying more than you think it is. We're going to talk about tone. Then we're going to go into best practices. When working with your kiddos, what are some of the best practices that can help your kids be successful? And then we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to tell you, I'm so pumped to talk about this. Your iPhone, using your iPhone for organization, because one of the number one things about this whole process is like you're getting, fit. how many of you have gotten, raise your hand if you've gotten 50 emails from teachers and you're like, what? I don't even know which email came first, which one should I open? It's like, you're just getting inundated with all these emails. My son goes to Saks, he's getting three teacher emails at any given time and then each one is different with another print off sheet that I gotta print off. Does that make sense, right? Like it's, it's like, ah, like how do I get organized? I'm going to teach you a, two key steps to get you organized. And then lastly, I want you to share your hot tips with everybody. I'm going to open it up from a, from a mastermind point of view so that you can kind of step in here and say, listen, Tomas, all of that's great, but I got to share this one hot tip that I learned and we'll give you, you know, a good 60 seconds, good minute, 30 seconds around there to share your hot tip with everybody. So if I don't share your hot tip, please share it with us because there, you may be doing that one thing that helps somebody that's on this, uh, this Zoom call help them. So let's jump in. Get your kids involved with planning. So um, have you noticed that kids like to have some control? Have you noticed that? They, they like to feel a part of the process, right? And so just let them think that they have some control of the process, right? And how do we do that? Well, we need to let them create a schedule. Now, if you're dealing with kids that are one and two, or excuse me, not one and two, but like, let's say five, six, seven years old, maybe they're younger, the younger group, you may ask them, hey, what do you want to do first? And you build the schedule. So here's what I did with Enzo. I um, actually uh, sat him down and I said, Enzo, um, I want to go over, here are all the assignments that your teacher's are expecting. And these are the four areas that they're expecting. Which one of these would you like to do first? Let's talk through this. Let's create a schedule. That he loved it. He said, well, I want to do this. And then I want to do this. I don't want to do this, this, because I want to eat lunch. So he literally had ownership of it. And let me tell you, he loved that aspect. Now, be okay if they decide to mix up the day. Be okay with it. So like us, let's just, it's so funny because I used to, I used to teach teachers. So part of my career as a teacher was I was also a traveling consultant and I would travel and teach teachers. And, and I would, and I was, I would explain, I said, you know, te teaching teachers is no different than teaching kids. You guys real like that, right? We're, we're just grown up kids. Okay. Let's, let's be honest. And the idea is, are there times where you go, you know what, I'm not going to do that. The first thing I want to mix it and put that at the end of the day, or I'm going to take that math. I want to knock it out. And then I'm going to do my reading instead. 
If they decide that they want to shift things, let them. Because when you give them a little bit of control, now they feel empowered to actually go do it, if that makes sense. Thumbs up if that makes sense. Everybody thumbs up. That makes sense. Good. And so be okay with them mixing up the day. When they feel like they have control, trust me, that means more productivity for you. Well, how is that possible? Well, when they feel like they want to do something, they're going to work on it and you don't have to sit there and baby, like, like sit right next to them for the older kids. Cause they feel like, Hey, I've got this, I can do this. And they have taken ownership to actually go do it. That's going to give you the ability to walk over and do your work, the things that you need to do, or that conference call that you need to knock out. Now, Understand that your younger kiddos, though, um, it, it, your younger kiddos, this, this is diff, this, it's, diff, it's a little bit more difficult, but I'll talk about that in best practice. Now, let's talk about tone because can I, a big confession time. My wife says I have to work on my tone. I have a tone issue. Um, she says that after years of teaching, your voice, when you start to get a little excited, can sound really mean. And I'm like, you got, are you serious? And she goes, did, did you just hear what you just said? <laughs> and of course I don't hear it. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not hearing that tone, but you but our voices say more than we think they're saying. So you have to protect and, 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 and understand that your tone is actually telling a bigger story than you think it is. So how do we help with this? Number one, this one is really just for me. I listen, I'm pu I put this in here for me just to remind me because none of you guys deal with this. You guys deal real good with tone. You've got Disney voices. I'm sure you're loving up on these kiddos and it's just perfect. But I'm going to talk about me. So if this helps you, then I hope so. Right. But this one's for me. I have, uh, I, I, I have a tendency and I have a typo there to get louder trying to explain something. So I explain it, and then my son looks at me like, uh, I don't get it. And so I get louder, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm like, I, and I explain it the exact same way, thinking if I say it louder, he'll understand. Now that's plumb crazy, right? And then I, 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 now my tone, I, I, I start to get like that frustration. You know how you're explaining something, and it makes perfect sense to you, but you're explaining it, and it it's not clicking with them. So now there's like this little frustration. It's like this little, ugh, okay, wait a minute. So you have to realize my tone can go from controlled to downright sounding mean. Uh, you know, this is just me being honest. Now, when you feel that point of frustration, raise your hand, thumbs up if you felt that frustration teaching your kids. Anybody felt that frustration? Yay, thank you. I'm not the only one. Whew. Okay, I'm not the only one. All right, if you felt that, here's what you gotta do. Take a breath, right? And, I, and, and try to explain it literally in a completely different way. Like, like anybody an Office fan, raise your hand if you like The Office. Any Office fans out there? It's the greatest show ever. Do you remember when, when Michael Scott uh, learned of the surplus? Do you remember this episode when he learned of the surplus? And he went to Oscar and he said, Oscar, explain it to me like a, I'm a 10-year-old right? See, you, you're going to have to put yourself in the mind of a seven-year-old, in the mind of a 10-year-old, in the mind of that child, so that when you start to get frustrated, you literally actually turn it on to say, you know what, no, what, no, no, no. I have to explain this so that they can understand it, but I can't get frustrated because it's not their fault they don't understand it. It's not that they don't, they're, they're, they're not smart. Our kids are, they're, they're smarter than us. Okay, listen, they're going to take over the world. Okay, let's just, we, let's just be honest, right? Our kids are really smart at this age. They're learning stuff that we never learned at this age, right? So the idea is I have to say it in a different way. Case in point today, probability. So Enzo started learning probability. He's never learned it before, but it was in his book and there wasn't a lesson. So I had to walk him through the lesson. And at one point he was trying to break probability in a percent, which that's smart probability. We've talked about that from a percentage standpoint, but he was not understanding that probability could also be a fraction. 
And so I had to break that down and explain it using a dice. I got a dice and I started showing him with the dice. The minute that I showed him the dice, he started getting it. A six is a one out of six chance. A five is a one out of six chance. Does that make sense? So sometimes you got to stop and explain it in a different way. And don't be afraid to draw a picture. Don't be afraid to take out some art, draw a picture, you know, get some macaroni, do, do manipulative, do whatever it takes to help them. Okay. But understand tone is so important. The way you sound can come across. And, and uh, my wife is a great reminder for me. Uh, uh, I don't know who your reminder is. Now, best practices. I wrote down a list of best practices and, um, you know, that, that can help you with your kiddos. And so number one best practice is, and this is a big one, don't try to recreate the classroom, okay? This is a big deal. And this is actually something that I found from a homeschool site. Listen, you're not fooling them. They know you're not the teacher, okay? So if you try to recreate like, like you're the teacher and you're going to stand in front of them and teach them, they're going to flat out rebel. Anybody already notice this? That they automatically, the minute you kind of step in and try to like, like to almost be like their teacher, they're like, no, 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 our teacher doesn't do it like that. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to be the teacher. I want to sit down with him and just kind of like, uh, mastermind it, explain it, maybe just talk through it. And then that way he's not feeling like I'm trying to quote unquote teach him. So don't try to recreate the classroom. Number two, be patient. Give the older ones a little bit of space. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to need to, at, at some point, you're going to need to allow them that, that, that space to actually kind of, uh, 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 and somebody's mic is open, I can hear it, um, but you're gonna have to uh, give them the space to work, otherwise, guess what? You won't get any work done. Now, if you have younger ones, here's the idea with younger ones. If you have the younger ones, you're gonna need to actually schedule time to give them attention, but those times are gonna be smaller because what's their attention span? right? Like 10, 15 minutes. If you're teaching an hour lesson in math, you're in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Guys, don't, if you're teaching for more than an hour, you're in trouble. Okay. They're, they're, they're going to, anarchy is going to begin. They're going to start throwing you out of the house. Okay. So don't do that, but give them shorter periods of time and then allow them to go work on their own with something at their level. Okay. So be patient, give them space. And for the younger kids, give them that attention and then allow them to go and, and do what they need to do. Okay. Number three breaks. My, this is the one where Enzo, uh, uh, really wanted to come in, but he he's tied up right now. Um, Enzo wanted me to tell you is that you have to give your kids breaks. He says, daddy, make sure you tell them they need mini breaks. And I said, well, I did a podcast with them last week. And I said, well, how long should these mini breaks be? He said, at least an hour. And I go that <laughs> you're not getting an hour break between four lessons. I was like, you're going to be working until 6 p.m., bro. Like, that's not going to work. I said, so what, how can we negotiate this break? And so he goes, all right, so um, how, about, um, how about 10 minutes? How about a 10-minute break between classes? I'd say, okay, go, well, 10, 15, we'll give you that mini break. Now, what does that do for our kids? For our kids, that gives them the time. Now, they, I don't let my son play video games during his mini break, just so you know, because that's the first thing he asked me. So I could play my Fortnite? Nope, can't play Fortnite. I said, let's think about some things you could do. And he goes, can I play with my Legos? I'm like, yes, play with your Legos. I love that. That's a great idea. Do something that's more mind stimulating and not just you know playing on your game. I, I said, that sounds like a great idea. But create a list, here's the deal, create a list of tasks and things that they can do during their mini break that you will allow or better yet, remember they want control, our kids want control. Let them create the list and then you approve and you say, that I will allow, this I will not allow. But you give them the control to make the list. So when they have break time, let me get a drink real quick. When they have that break time, they now can have the power to, they're choosing what they want to do. It's like centers. Does anybody remember centers? Thumbs up if you know what centers are. 
right? Remember sinners? So with sinners, when I taught third grade, I had sinners. I had the computer center. I had the reading center. I had the drawing center. I had an origami center. I taught my kids origami. So I had an origami center and I had all these centers around. So when they finished their work, they could pick one of those things. But here's the deal. They knew that if other kids were there, they had to pick something else. So if you have more than one kid and they're like, you, the rule is like, if one kid is already on it, the other kid has to go to some, one of the other areas. This is the way you allow them to let you work. Because let me tell you guys a secret. Are y'all ready for the secret? Some of those breaks might go an hour while you're on a conference call. Okay, full disclosure. Some, some of those breaks, they've gone an hour and a half. Okay, but here's the thing. He's working on his Legos, okay? He's doing something that we decided was okay and it gave me the ability to get in my office and work and do what needs to get done because productivity, let's let we all we all understand this. Like look, we got to put food on the table. We got to work. We got to we got to make all this work while we're while I'm help, helping him. So breaks. Um number 4, Make a schedule. I think this is really, really, really important. And you need to have a schedule. Um, we have a, a, a schedule that I printed up and it's on the refrigerator. I have it. It breaks down. Okay. It, it, he's going to wake up at this time because Enzo told me, I said, Enzo, what time do you want to wake up? He said, well, I don't want to wake up at 545 anymore. I said, dude, you, you don't have to wake up at five. When do you want to wake up? He's like, 9 30. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Like uh, that night. <laughs> listen, we get let's let's pull it back a little bit. Let's be a little bit more real, realistic. He says, okay, 8 30. I said, okay, cool. So 8 30 you wake up. I said, when do you want to you want to eat breakfast? He said, Yeah. I said, so if I gave you an hour to wake up, eat breakfast, and we could start math at 8 30, does that sound fair? He said, that's great. So we started creating a schedule working back for backwards from when they want to get up. And listen, trust me, you need to create a routine around the wake up. The wake up is going to be one of the most important parts because if everybody's waking up whenever willy nilly, you'll never create a routine. You'll never create a schedule and they will drive you up the wall. Trust me on this. They will drive you crazy. So you need a schedule so that at any point in the day, if I get a call, let's say I get a really important phone call and I look at the schedule and I go, okay, hey dude, what are you supposed to be doing? Oh, it's reading time. Okay, great. You know what to do for reading time. You know, what, you know how to make this work. I got to take this call. You got to go, go make it work. He goes and takes care of reading. He knows the schedule. It's already up on the wall. He knows what to go do. It's really, really, really important, but make sure you have their input on that. Number five, get organized. This, I can't tell you. For me, when I finally came to the realization that I was about to become my son's teacher, I went back to the good old days. I went back and started looking at my old lesson plans. So for those of you who missed it earlier, um, I was third, fourth, fifth. This is my lesson plan. I want to say this one's from 2003. I think this, yeah, this is from 2003. And this actually has my lesson plans that I wrote out. And I was a teacher at Camelot Elementary over by Roosevelt High School. And this is the thing. If I didn't have this written out, if I didn't have it planned, I was dead in the water with those kids. They would chew me up and spit me out and, and, and listen, your kids will do the same thing. If they, don't, if they don't know there's a schedule, if they don't know there's a plan, they're going to cause absolute anarchy in the house and they're going to drive you crazy and there's zero productivity. So the iPhone can make this a dream, okay? The iPhone, there are so many cool new features with the phone that I want to show you that are going to make this really, really fun and easy to do. And so with that, let's go to organizing. I wanna show you how I got super organized. Here's what I did. I created email VIPs. Does anybody use VIPs on Mac yet? Have you used this yet? Okay, this is, oh, this game changer. Game changer, get ready, you ready? Here we go. Stay with me now. This is really important because um, this is going to truly revolutionize your, uh, um, uh, your, your uh, uh, ability to get organized. Now, um, if you uh, look, well, that's not going to work. Okay. 
you guys are seeing this on the screen. I want to be able to get the cursor here. So let's go to my little arrow. All right. And oh, it's not showing up. All right. Let me turn this off real quick. And all right, that's not going to turn off. That's okay. So here's the thing. Creating VIPs is very simple. What you're going to do is you are going to literally, oh, hold on one second. This thing is stopping my, uh, let's see here. Controls more. Hold on one second. Take that off. Okay. So now you're going to click the star by their name. So if you look at the very top of the email, there's this little star. You see that arrow on the screen there? That arrow is a star. When you click that star, that email becomes a VIP and it goes into this VIP folder. So if you look to your left on your Mac mail, now this is Mac mail on my actual desktop, but guess what? Does this show up on your iPhone? All of these folders show up on your iPhone too. Okay. So now anytime that there's somebody that's a VIP, here's the thing. I get automatic notification. That thing shows up in the top of my thing. It says, Hey, you got a VIP email on my computer. And then it will show me all the emails that I have for that VIP. So my teachers, I have all of Enzo's teachers, uh, Darla, uh, Miss, um, Osorio, um, and, um, his other teacher, Kimberly, um, is on there. Um, yeah, you see it right there, Kimberly. And then Stacy Kruger, that's his, uh, his homeroom teacher. So now any email that comes in, it automatically goes into that VIP folder. And guess what? Have you ever lost an email? Have you ever tried to find an email and you're like, where's that email? I, don't have, I, don't, I do not have that problem. I go to my VIPs and literally that email is right there. I go to it, click it, find the link. Have you seen the amount of video links that you're getting from your teachers to watch a video? Have you seen the amount of like papers you have to click and print and this and that? If you don't get organized with your email, this will drive you crazy. So I actually have everything loaded. As soon as I get an email, I go to it, I open it up, I print whatever he needs, I print it and it's done. This has been a game changer. Game changer, thumbs up if you agree this could be a game changer for you to help you with your teachers. This is gonna help you big time, okay? So make sure that you create VIPs with your teachers. Now, could you create work VIPs? Could you put your clients in this, right? So for, for all of, uh, uh, of Chicago title, right? You could act actually have your top clients that are in this VIP so that anytime you open your mail, you will not miss an email from one of them. You're not gonna miss an email because it's gonna be right there. You're gonna see it right away. So using your phone for organization, set up VIP emails. And lastly, oh my goodness, this one right here, let me tell you, this is a game changer. Notes. I am a note, like, like I, I, listen, I am a crazy person when it comes to notes. And notes have been a big reason why I've been able to curate so many quotes, curate so much information. And so your notes app on your iPhone, by the way, just a moment of silence for those of you who don't have an iPhone. I'm sorry. Um, go get an iPhone. It's so much easier. Uh, I just, um, I, I just think it will, it will make life so much easier. Trust me. You already have the iPad. That's the thing I always laugh about, right? Most people that don't have the iPhone, they have the iPad, but then they, they say, well, I don't want the I, iPhone. I was like, just go get the iPhone. Trust me. So in iPhone, you can create folders. Now here's the game changer with folders. I have all of Enzo's homework assignments because I have to scan his homework. Anybody like this, you have to scan the homework. I have to scan it and send it to his teacher, but he's doing it by hand. So that's not like something he can just do on the computer. So I have to scan it and I put it into folders. Well, the first thing you need to learn is how to make a folder. So if you look here, y'all can see my cursor now, right? Can you see my little cursor on that, um, on the uh, screen there? So right here in your um, uh, notes, you go into your notes and you have your iCloud notes and then you're going to go to a new folder. Now, what's a folder? Think of this as folders where you're going to put your notes, right? Has anybody already done this yet? Is anybody already using this feature yet? Raise your hand if you're already using this feature. Only a couple of you so far. Okay. So when you set up your folder, right, this folder that you see here, now inside of that, you can put your kids 
all of their information inside of that folder. So I have a folder for Enzo's reading, his language arts, his math, and his, uh, uh, um, so it's uh, reading, language arts, and um, those are the three. He's only got three that he's actually physically got to turn something in for, right? Reading, language arts, and math. And so I have three folders. And then what I do is once I have those folders, now I'm going to teach you how to scan your documents for your kiddos. Now, I already have pasted for those of you who are like, okay, Tomas, uh, I need the abbreviated, uh, really like explain it to me like I'm a 10 year old, right? If you need that, don't worry. It, there's a, I have the link right here. You see it at the bottom. It's also in the chat. So if you look in the chat, I've also put the link for this site that I got this, this little uh, clip from. If you click that link, it will literally take you step by step. Now here's the beauty of notes. Are you ready? How many of you raise your hand if you have an iPhone and you have a Mac computer? Who's got an iPhone and a Mac computer? Anybody? A couple of you? Who's got an, uh, an iPhone and an iPad? You got an iPhone and an iPad, okay? Um, if, who here has an iPhone, but you don't, you just have a computer, just a normal computer, right? You got a normal computer, right? You got a PC, right? If you have that, okay, that's fine. No big deal. <clears throat> because iCloud, everybody can actually get access to iCloud on a computer. Now, can you do this on Android? Can you do what I'm talking about on Android? Yes, there's an app called OneNote from Microsoft, okay? You, everything that I'm sharing right here, you can do this on an Android. It's super easy to do, and it's basically the exact same format. The one caveat to this, you may not be able to do this, what I'm about to show you next. Um, the next part here that I'm gonna show you is, all right, uh, scanning documents. Can you guys see that still? Scanning documents, right? Can y'all see that on my screen over here? Everybody thumbs up? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So now I want to show you this here because this is so cool. So if you notice, this is actually from my iPhone. I took this from my iPhone. So this is Enzo's folders. I have an English, math, reading, and oh, that's, I did make another one. He likes comic books. So I went and downloaded a bunch of like uh, uh, finish this comic so that he can do these little finished comics, okay? And I'm gonna go into my notes in just a second just to show you the power of this. So then what I did was is I have, here are his folders. Then what I did was is I opened up his math folder. Everybody see his math folder there now? So this is a screenshot of inside his math folder. Look at the top. What I did was his math teacher has lessons on video. Now, I have to go in there every time and open it up and type it in. And I was like, this is madness. I've got to make this easier. He can now go into notes on my iPad, go to his folder, click on this link, type in that password, and it automatically pops up on the computer. He doesn't need me there. It's all in the folder for him. Anything that comes up, I put it in that folder. Any link that comes up that he needs, I put it in that folder for math. The same thing can be for reading, the same thing can be for science, whatever the case may be. But think about this. Imagine if they are working from an iPhone or if they don't have an iPhone, if they're doing OneNote, OneNote will save across multiple devices. iPhone notes will save across multiple devices. So if you have an iPad that you're not using, if you have an old laptop that you're not using, you could be sitting at your computer doing I can be doing all of this on my computer and it shows up on an uh, iPad that he's using. Is that not amazing? Thumbs up if that's not amazing. That's amazing, right? This works for OneNote as well. Now watch this. Here's where the magic happens. I open up the next screen and you see there where it says scan documents. You see down there at the bottom, that little window, there's a little bitty camera. If you look at the next, if you look over at the next one, uh, there is a camera there. That little camera, when you hit the camera, a scan documents comes up. Now, for those of you at, 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 uh, at uh, Chicago Title, listen, listen, this is big secrets here we're giving out. You've probably heard about this and you know about this and you've probably done a class about this, but, but trust me, this is huge, okay? When you click that scan document, what it's going to do, it's going to pop up your camera and it literally will auto start to fill out and knows that there's a piece of paper in front of it and it will scan it and create a PDF, hallelujah. Oh my goodness, 
Is that not awesome? Now, here's the beautiful thing. What if it's five pages? What if the document you're scanning, like Enzo's homework, that I got to scan here in a minute, Enzo's homework for math is two pages. It's front and back, right? Well, when I scan, the first time I scan, it takes that page and it puts it down at the bottom, and then it allows me to scan again. I scan again, and then I hit the save button. That little save button where it says keep scan, it now takes those two papers and makes it into one PDF. Oh, my goodness. It's magic, people. It's iPhone magic. Is iPhone not amazing? Yes. Now, can you do that on OneNote? I'm pretty sure you can do that on OneNote because whatever Apple can do, uh, OneNote is copied, right? Now, that's, that was a joke. I'm sorry. Um, but this is the deal. Th this right here will help you get all of your paperwork that you've got to scan and get back to your teacher like that. Because now all I got to do, let me show you. I'm going to go to my, let me see if it'll allow me to do this. I'm going to stop this share real quick. Let me go up here and I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to open my notes because I want to show you something really quickly here. And uh, let's see here. Let me exit out of this. And so when I go to my notes here, you'll see my notes. And then let me share this with you um, on my notes here. Uh, so go over here to notes. Bam. All right. So you now should, you should be able to see my notes. I'm going to go to Enzo's homework. Now you see, again, I told you I nerded out on this. Do you see how many notes I have here? Like, I mean, this is ridiculous, right? But every one of these serves a purpose. So when I go to Enzo's homework, I'm gonna go to math. Here's the beauty of it. I click on the scan, I right click it, right? And all I have to do here is just go to share. Once I go to share, it's going to make that PDF into an email so that I can now email that to the teacher, just like that. So this creates, so if I'm over at his desk and I scan something, it automatically puts it on my computer because it's all synced up. It's all iCloud. Again, this is all iCloud based, right? So now I could go in, share that document with his teacher. Thumbs up if that's not awesome. That's going to get you organized. That's going to get you really prepared. Now, let's just talk practicality. Um, could this work with real estate? Could we be scanning our buyer agreements and putting them into folders for our, 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 for our, our clients? Could we be scanning a lot of information that we don't need a printed copy anymore? We could just get a scanned digital copy and then we can ditch that physical copy to some degree. This will help massively with that. Now, just to, again, to show you my, my, the, just the pure craziness, this is my quote folder. This quote folder has, I mean, look at all this, Nelson Mandela quotes. I'm doing a class uh, this Thursday, um, a mastermind on that book that I told you about. And so I'm learning a little bit about Nelson Mandela. So I wanted to go get all of the quotes, his top quotes from him. And then if you ever see my Instagram, the Tomas Martinez, you can follow me on Instagram. These are all the quotes that I've used on my site. And I needed a place to curate all that so that my social media person can grab it and use it. So he has this shared on his iPhone. So there's so much there. And uh, as we wrap this up, I just want to wrap this up with you, um, uh, this last part here, because, you know, for all of us here, we are doing the best we can in, in, in where we're at. And so this last piece is that, listen, who's got a hot tip? Um, if you're doing something that's working, we need your help. I want you to share. So unmute your mic, jump in, share what you got. Bueller? I mean, I think just from my perspective, um, I make, um, if Allie has a choice of homework and things to do, she's a little different because she's a high schooler, but we're starting with the hardest tasks first. And I think that would be really applicable with an elementary school age kid. If they really struggle with math, have them start with that first and get it out of the way while their brain is fresh rather than doing the easy things first and moving to the hard things. Love that idea. That is a great idea. Thumbs up if you agree. That's a great idea. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Who else? Um, I'll go. So like Polly, my daughter is in high school. And so, you know, for me, um, the idea of doing like high school chemistry or calculus is like <laughs> a no-go. Um, so I just kind of like try to give myself a break and ask for help. You know, I have yeah. 
friends are, you know, my boyfriend's great at math and can do calculus and uh, my strengths are English and reading and writing. So um, I'm just trying to give myself a little bit of a break. You know, we don't all have to be experts in no. all of the subjects because there's just, there's no way. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. And don't feel that pressure. Don't take that pressure on. Find resources um, because it will drive you crazy if you think you're going to have to try to do everything. All right, who else? Who else got a hot tip? Go. Um, on that tutoring piece, I know there are a bunch of online tutors that you can use. Um, and I used them in the past with Allie. Like if she had a math problem that I couldn't help her with, and I can't remember what it's called. I'll look for it and shoot it over to Tomas so maybe he can share it. Um, but I mean, it was amazing. She could take a picture of the problem and then they would actually work through it with them. So it's not like they're just giving you the answer um, and you just pay by the minute. It's like, it's really, it was awesome. It was through the app store. So I'll figure out what it is and send it to y'all. Okay. Um, but I know they have all the subjects. Wow. That's really cool. So um, if you want to do th this will really help everybody. Uh, there's a chat feature. Everybody see that little chat feature. You can actually just chat that in the group and then everybody can just go there and copy paste because you're going to put it in your notes because you now know how to use your notes. So you're going to cut and paste that and put it into your notes. Super easy to do. But if you if you find that link, Polly, drop it in there. Anybody else? Um, I kind of want to piggyback on that because um, we are a military family. So there's um, a tutor for military families and it's free of charge for them. So I know I just posted it on my Facebook page not that long ago. Yeah. Um, so I can, I can go in there and see, uh, um, you know, what that website is, but it's, it's kind of cool because I've used it for my, you know, for my girls. Um, I love that. And then we also, you know, I, I did make a schedule for them. Um, so in the mornings, my girls meet with their teachers for an hour. So they both meet at a different time with them. So they're able to see their classmates and kind of interact with them as well. Um, but what I started doing for my third grader is after she gets offline, she calls her other friends that are in class with her and they read together, they do math together. And I you love know, that. Make oh, it that's a great fun. idea. Yeah, just to make it fun and something different because, I mean, even third grade math, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're doing right now. Like, I'm I love so that. Mad, you know, but yeah, that's something something different for us. Hi, so Jessica, explain. So just so everybody gets it, so I want to make sure because I think I'm gonna I offer this to Enzo, um, because he's got he's got this this group chat called the Homies, which I find <laughs> absolutely hysterical. <laughs> It's the homies, okay? So his group chat is called the homies, and they're always chatting. They're and they're always FaceTiming. I don't know if this is a phenomenon that y'all are seeing too, where they'll just mm -hmm. sit there and FaceTime each other, which I think is they're not looking at the screen at all. The screen has no bearing on anything, but they still have to FaceTime for some reason, right? Mm -hmm. And so would you are you saying that you set that they set the phone up and they just kind of have a conference call kind of deal and do their work together? Yep. And the girls, like my third grader she's been meeting with her friends so there's four of them and um you know in the morning they'll talk they'll talk about school work they'll read to each other and they're looking at each other but then in the evening they have another session and that's just you know hanging out you know they just hang out and talk love it. About TikTok and stuff you know i love it <laughs> and it's just like is, is it a zoom or conference call like an iphone um so we're doing duo on duo. on Google. Okay. Then, um, Zoom for, or it's actually Google Meet or something like that okay. um, for classwork. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I like it. One more. Who's got a one more hot tip? Let's go. I love, I mean, I love that idea. My granddaughter is um, in second grade and we were just talking about how she's really missing her friends. They do a um, classroom group together and they see them, but I love that idea. And I'm going to share that with my daughter-in-law for sure. I, I know you mentioned the break thing. I think that's really important. I know one of the biggest things, again, is for people, they just have that classroom mentality that the kids are supposed to be doing homework all day or, you know, and just reiterating that it's not a normal classroom and you do need to take those break times. I'll take my granddaughter for a walk for, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We go get the mail, whatever it is, just get out yeah. of the house. I love that. I love and that. I like Polly's. I love starting all the hard stuff in the beginning. That's just been a rule. 
all my daughter's a senior and that's kind of the rule of that we've always used to start with the hardest stuff first love it that's a great idea excellent idea so to wrap this up here's here's uh uh, uh i'm gonna go back y'all can still see my screen right can y'all still see that Thumbs up if y'all can still see that. Okay, great. So there's three ways to stay in touch with me. Um, these are the three ways you can, I have a YouTube channel, TM3 Impact. Um, I have a podcast uh, that's a lot of fun. And uh, just, and, and recently I had a mortgage company on, uh, John Hudson. And so a lot has changed in mortgage since that podcast has come out, but there was a lot that he shared that was right in line with where everything has gone. And so there's a lot of insight in that. Um, I definitely recommend that. Um, I have a weekly mindset Monday. So I'm in my home office and I was telling uh, Natalie at the beginning of this, there's a lot of, I got a lot of shenanigans going on. I got a ring light. Like my wife said, your lighting is terrible. You've got to have a light in your, in your, in your office if you're going to be doing these videos. So she went and bought me, you know, the social media ring light. It's absolutely hilarious. As soon as I saw it, I was like, there's a reason why I never bought one of these. I, I just, I never thought I'd ever use one, but here we go. Since my wife bought it, I got to use it, you know? Um, so, but what I would say is I did a, a Mindset Monday on how to be effective in your office. Watch that Mindset Monday. It just came out um, uh, this, this, just this last Monday. Um, I'm going to be doing a class on Friday. Um, it's called I Buyer Protection. It's an I Buyer Protection class. Now, there's a lot, <laughs> it's funny. There's a lot that's changed with this iBuyers, I don't know if you notice, but iBuyers aren't buying right now. I don't know if you know that. They've actually stopped all iBuying, which is I, I think is very interesting. Um, but I created a class to really help educate your uh, buyers and sellers about what is an iBuyer and protecting yourself against them. That's going to be on uh, on uh, Friday, there's a cost to that, but I put the link in the chat. If you look in the chat, there's a link for this class on TicketBud. I'd love for you guys to come to that if you're available on Friday. It's going to be about an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, um, but it'll be a great class to kind of show you what is going on in the iBuyer market and how I think uh, I can kind of bring some, shed some light on that and help you. And then last but not least, can we get jazz hands for uh, uh, Chicago title? Everybody, jazz hands. Je uh, Chicago title. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you giving me the ability to share uh, some of this of what I've learned as a teacher. Um, but and I really appreciate the people that you bring together. Um, I I'm looking forward to more classes like this. I'm looking forward to bringing as much value as I can for your team and for all the agents that are online with us today. Um, I really appreciate it. And so with that, Polly, I want to say thank you. Any parting words, uh, uh, Polly? Um, no, thanks, Tomas. I really appreciate it. This was great info. I can't wait to put it in place. Awesome. Um, and I will shoot out, if, if you're interested in this, just shoot in that uh, tutoring app, send me an email um, or put your email address in the chat and I'll get it out to you. I want to make sure I send the right one because it was from her math tutor. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure that I get that the right one out to everybody. Perfect. So those of you, if, uh, uh, if they don't have your email, just drop it in the chat and Polly will send that out to you if they don't have your email already. Again, Polly, thank you for the opportunity. I want to thank everybody. I will hold out here online uh, while people are kind of uh, uh, leaving. If anybody here has a question, if like, hey, hey, Tomas, can you explain that one thing real quick? If you, I'll hold out here uh, uh, while everyone's leaving if you have any other questions. Um, so thank you guys for being a part of this class. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas. Bye. We'll see ya.